Hi guys, I'm Shmi, hello and welcome back to the channel where you join me on a beautiful day here with the McLaren Rally in Carmel during Car Week in California with a pretty awesome lineup including not one but two McLaren P1s which we are about to take out for a little drive. Now earlier this year when I was in Texas I met up with a few friends including supercar Steven who was there with his Aventador SV Roadster. Well he's now added this P1 to his collection and is driving it as it should be. Having joined the rally to get here, it is one of only a few in the ice silver, which is actually the same color as the first ever P1. And he has kindly offered to let me take this for a drive now out on the wonderful roads here in Carmel Valley with him driving in his friend's carbon P1 as well. Now with the Senna in my garage, the P1 has always been a car that intrigued me a lot. I've been lucky enough to drive them a few times before, but I took one out with the Triple F earlier this year and I wasn't filming it, but it really got me thinking because this is one of the greatest cars that McLaren has ever made. And today I'd like to talk a little bit more about that while we take it for a drive here with some beautiful scenery on a lovely day during the McLaren rally. Let's do it. It's P1 time. Well, the P1 was McLaren's first hybrid, but we now have the series production Artura, which has that three liter twin turbo hybrid setup, 685 horsepower, totally new take on the technology that was introduced with this. Of course, for the P1, it has the 3.8 liter twin turbocharged V8. And we'll be hearing plenty of that in a moment when we head out with this and a quick nod to the wonderful number plate that Supercar Steven has, P1. Anyway, let me show you around it a little bit. Fair play though to everyone who has been joining the rally, which started in Lake Tahoe. They've driven about a thousand miles or so over the few days to get here to Car Week, but we've got the likes of the McLaren 620R, the hardcore version of the 570S, effectively based on the GT4 car. We've got the 765LT in my favorite MSO Cerulean Blue, the Carbon P1 we'll check out in a moment, GT 720S, 50th anniversary 12C Spider, only 50 of those, 720, 720, another Cerulean 765LT, Fistral Blue 765LT over there as well. But we're here today to talk more about these. Out of the 375 P1s in existence, I've been lucky to drive them a couple of times before, as I said, but this is a car that was really a defining era, that holy trinity, McLaren arriving on the scene prior to this, having only ever had the 12C, the MP4 12C, and then they turned up with their 900 horsepower plus hybrid hypercar, absolutely dominating on the racetrack, setting incredible levels of performance and tech. And here we happen to have two of them together. Look at this. Look at the full MSO exposed carbon fiber bodywork with that heritage logo there on the bonnet as well. 916 horsepower, the ability to pop it into E mode as well to drive it only about six or seven miles on electric, but still an experience in its own right. We've got the wing just slightly raised at the moment, the aero mode as it's called. And this car has a few specific details, no badging at the back, instead, the red outline of P1 on the engine cover there. If we open up the door of Stephen's car inside, we've got the black Alcantara interior, lots of glossy carbon fiber for the full carbon monocoque. We've got the Alcantara with the red stitching and also the red McLaren embroidery up top as well. Let me take a seat inside here and just start it up quickly because the noise this car makes when you do start it is always really quite cool. Take a listen to this. It uses a relay to fire it up. And yeah, I think we're gonna be heading out with the two cars together in a moment with the Senna. That's cool, isn't it? And to be honest, having done a lot of miles in my Senna, like I said, when I drove one of these recently, it made me think about quite a few things to do with it. I'd like to touch on those when we're out on the road. I tell you what, being back in a McLaren P1 is a very cool place to be, especially when following another McLaren P1 as we're gonna be heading to go and find a nice road to drive and instantly being back in this car makes it very, very clear that this was a giant leap forward for McLaren to present a car that had this, I guess, balance of technology because when you drive it like this, it's smooth, it's easy, it feels pinpoint sharp, but it's also very clean in the way it drives. See, there's no dramatic juddering or uncomfort from the gearbox, for example. And then those noises that you get out of it, that turbo swoosh, 
and this is of course in complete normal normal driving modes at the moment it feels small and nimble the view over the front scuttle leaves you no doubt where the front wheels are sitting i'm actually going to press active dynamics pop, pop it into sport and sport modes and manual as well just to enjoy a little bit of manual shifting out of it this car instantly is so unbelievably cool and to be looking at the same car given a different color but to be looking at the same car that i'm driving in front of me makes it even more special those noises now what i was saying earlier is that at the beginning of the year when I went to visit the Triple F collection and drove a number of cars with the team up there, for example, the Huayra BC, Machina Volante, the McLaren Sabre, and the GT500, in fact, I went out as well when we went for dinner one evening, driving in their P1, and I didn't film it, it was just an off-the-cuff run to dinner, and it absolutely blew me away. Now, I've done a lot of miles in my McLaren Senna, a lot of miles, track driving where it absolutely excels, road driving, some longer distance journeys, some town journeys as well. But this, I think, is, well, in technology terms, a stratosphere ahead. Obviously, the Senna is faster on a racetrack. It's significantly lighter and has a lot more downforce. So that's pretty much a given. Uh, nice GT3 coming towards us. <laughs> cool, cool. Lots and lots of nice cars around. But this, I think, was really a benchmark car. It's one of the best looking cars ever. It still looks like a spaceship, despite the fact that the concept was presented nine years ago. How is this a nine year old car? They went into production eight years ago. It's mental that it still looks so good as it does. And in fact, it has ample technology, you know, your entertainment, your digital dashboard display. A very nice open feeling in the cabin with the glass roof panels up above you. And this is scratching on the surface. And I think forever this will be an icon. Regardless of the direction McLaren take, whether they do eventually go electric, whether perhaps something happens and they stop to produce so many vehicles, who knows which way that goes. But either way, this is always going to have been the McLaren P1, the in many ways successor to the F1. And I think it will achieve legendary status. I think that this will be a car that in the future will be very, very special. This generation, the 918, the LaFerrari and the P1. And I know this begs the question, therefore, of why don't I sell my Senna for a P1? And we can touch, I think, a little bit more on that later on. We're going to be heading up a nice canyon road in a moment and get to enjoy this a little bit more. But first impressions again after a while away from the wheel. Oh, look, this is a really, really nice place to be. We've got a yellow GT4. It's mad how many nice cars are around here, especially on a day like today, although the weather... Oh, oh, Koenigsegg, Koenigsegg. <laughs> Koenigsegg, Agira RS going the other way. <laughs> That's why I've been leaving my cameras on because you never know what's going to be coming. Wow. Driving in a P1, following a P1, and a Koenigsegg goes the other way. That takes getting the head around. Oh wow, the Rimac Nevera, followed by a 992 convertible. We're not the only people out for a canyon drive today. I'd forgotten quite how smooth the gearbox is on this car. Now you can turn it into track mode. You can also go up into race mode when you're stopped and lower the suspension and raise the rear spoiler. But in terms of sound and the emotion the car carries, You feel the torque fill as well. Obviously, having the hybrid system means that you get power earlier in the rev range. You're not waiting, for example, for the turbos. The lag is completely irrelevant because you've got that electric power with instant torque to fill in the gap. Let's grab a line Mustang convertible. This is really cool to be in a P1, following a P1 on a mountain pass. Yes, okay, it feels heavier than the center. When you start to go through a corner like this, you are definitely aware that it's about 250, 300 kilos heavier. But there's also a little bit, I think, more to that. When you're on the road, you know, those bits of weight saving aren't quite so relevant. Out on the racetrack, of course, that's exactly what it's all about. So I can up there. Just imagine, well, in the same excitement that I have for the Rimac and the Koenigsegg, imagine seeing two P1s coming up the road. 
Oh, this is awesome. This is just, it's such a good car. It's such a good car in so many ways. I think this is one of the best cars, if not the best car that McLaren have ever made. And I'm sorry to say that for the Speedtail, the Elva and the Senna. Not that I've actually driven an Elva at this point, but this just, it connects, it talks to you. I feel almost emotional driving it. And when I went for an experience about four years ago now, when it was five years since the P1 had been introduced with McLaren up in Scotland, I still couldn't believe it. It felt like a brand new car. And this absolutely does as well. This car is completely dialed in. It feels perfect. It does not show its age at all. Oh, I, I, I really enjoy this. I really do. And the P1 was one of my favorite cars for quite a while. <laughs> it kind of splits me a little bit. If it was a like for like, if somebody came to me and said, hey, I'll give you my P1 if you give me your Senna, I'm pretty sure I would say yes. It would be heartbreaking to not have my Senna, but the reality is the P1 is worth significantly more than the Senna, so that's never going to be an option. But also, I own the Senna from new, I got the opportunity to be part of the car before it was actually physically being. I got to spec it, obviously, to collect it at zero miles, to do all of the journeys with it, and to have those memories, but also know everything about it. That's always been a big part of my collection. I really enjoy cars that I was able to have that whole process myself, to have that personal connection with it all the way through. Now, admittedly, I could not have bought a P1 back when they came out. I was stretching myself into my 12C at the time that the P1 came out. In fact, the P1s were on the road. My first ever drive with the 12C to go to the MTC ended up with a chase of a P1 on the motorway, which was really, really good fun. So arguably, like the SLS Black Series, maybe it's one for the wish list in the future. I don't know where I'd rank it next to the likes of the Carrera GT and the LFA and obviously Absolute Dreamland, the Ferrari F50. Those are very much some of my favorite cars, but this is a nice old, I think, Maserati. This is really, I know just driving gently now, a very, very special car, honestly. It always will be. And, well, big thanks to Urus, big thanks to Supercar Steven for the opportunity to drive it today, honestly. What I've not done yet, though, is press E mode. Oh, nice. Nice. <laughs> that was a Cobra Daytona. <laughs> Presumably not a real one, but in any case, a very cool thing. E mode, electric driving. Obviously, this is where things are now. Archira, Ferrari's 296 GTB, the Acura or Honda NSX. These hybrid, well, SF90, as I have coming, these hybrid supercars are the next generation offering some electric driving, and it is just bizarre. You don't have huge amounts of power. This is so cool. GT3 RS Visac following a Cobra. This is one of the coolest places I've ever driven with all of these cars coming past us. <laughs> I love Car Week. I love the P1 at Car Week. Wow. Heading back up the hill though in E mode is where you start to realize that you don't have a whole lot of power. Even kind of downshifting, you don't really get much acceleration back up the hill. And that's where the newer cars actually do that really well. We've got a Ferrari, a couple of cars behind as well. This just goes on and on. So I'm gonna pop it back into normal driving. The engine, oh, the way that fires back in, it's so good. I've gone out of active, so let's pop it back into active, keep it in manual. I love the smoothness with which it both shifts, but also stops the engine and starts it again without it interfering or intervening negatively in the driving experience. And then these turbo swooshes, just to drop it down a little bit. Use here. <laughs> that noise is glorious. Rolls-Royce Cullinan just pulled over to the side there. Some freedom for us. I love the noise when it spools up and then the blow off that follows. And it's a Ferrari FF actually that's behind us as well. <laughs> it's such an intoxicating sound and it's always. This is not a car that has a quiet mode from the inside, let's say. We're just gonna pull in here because the view that we have is out of this world. Truly stunning. 
<laughs> FF cruises by and there was definitely a uh, camera phone out there. <laughs> Cameras everywhere. And that's a Bugatti just in front of us. Only, only here. Only here do you see a classic Bugatti. Pebble Beach, Monterey Car Week, hey? Back down the hill we go, a quick little stop there. And what a place this is. The views are superb. Not to mention the cars, just before getting back into the car, in fact, we had a GT2 RS and a GT3 RS and a 996 GT3 all going past, which was also pretty awesome to actually see. Let me pop it back into active. The way these roads go back and forth, meandering down the hillside, super smooth tarmac. It's a really, really nice place to drive this, especially in cars that do that. It just gives you feedback all the way through the rev range. It's always exciting. So cool. This is a dream day. This is an absolute dream day out. This is just beyond amazing. There are so few words to describe this day and just being at the wheel of a P1. It's also really, really fast. Oh, another McLaren 650S went the other way. 650S Spider. The power, the feeling, the blow off when you lift off, the responsiveness. This car is incredible. This car is genuinely unbelievable. And the fact that McLaren made this and were delivering these only about two and a half years after they had started is I think the most mind-blowing aspect of it that they popped up almost out of nowhere as the new McLaren automotive and this is what they were able to produce and deliver and it's it's such as I said earlier it's such an iconic car it will be a legendary car old Corvette we, we might well have a P2 something along those lines, it probably won't be called P2, coming in the next couple of years. The next pioneer, the next pioneering move in terms of technology. But it will always be, I guess, a follow-up to this. Is that another McLaren? McLaren GT there? And again, and another one, 720S. I, okay, we're in McLaren land. <laughs> I think this pretty much summarizes today. We're heading back, but who knows what else we might see on the way. Otherwise, let's get back to base. There's an Elva. There's a McLaren Elva. <laughs> oh, it just goes on. It just goes on and on. Of course, this is the McLaren base, so not hugely surprising that an Elva popped on through. But we are now returning back to where we began. <laughs> the Elva tops it off. We've been driving in two P1s and going in the other direction. It was an Agera RS, a Rimac Nevera, and a McLaren Elva. And I'm trying to get my head around it all, and at the moment I can't. The sun is starting to go down, but back at base, the two cars parked here with all of the other McLarens, and one more that I didn't mention earlier, but just down this way is a Senna GTR on display down towards the lounge chill out area that way. But each time getting the opportunity to drive a P1 is a very, very significant and memorable one. It's a truly spectacular car. This is a beautiful specification in the ice silver with the silver wheels as well. Of course, the full carbon car, very spectacular as well, as are the majority of the cars here in this little lineup as part of the rally to Monterey Car Week. But a huge, huge thanks to Supercar Steven for the opportunity for the drive in the P1 today. Yeah, makes me think, who knows what the future has in store. For the time being, it would be a little bit too much of a stretch, but one day that would be a car, I think, to add to the wish list, to the dreams. For now though, thank you very much for watching guys. I appreciate your support as always. That's it for this time, and I'll see you again very soon. Cheers.